Hello and welcome to the Off by One security channel. My name is Steven Sims and this will be a recorded video and instead of a stream like I normally do on Fridays. Uh, real quick, where this came from, this particular stream I want to do is one of the previous streams we looked at a mitigation called export address table filtering. And we reverse engineered it, learned about how it works, and we found some undocumented structures. And I, I didn't have time in that video to kind of recreate those structures to see how that's helpful in IDA Pro and Hacksrace Decompiler. So I wanted to just do a quick video on how you go about doing that, or at least one of the ways you can do it. So we're gonna recreate an undocumented structure using local types on IDA Pro. I will put the link to that other video I'm referring to where we reverse engineered that mitigation um, in the description on this one, if you wanna take a look. So first thing, just to catch us back up, I'm gonna go over to Windabug and I've got in Windabug loaded the uh, program that we were using in that video I'm referencing. It's basically just a little silly program I wrote that allows us to be able to test some of these mitigations. And what we learned, and I'll show you in IDA actually first, there is a global structure inside a function called mit lib validate access to protected page. It's right here. So let's zoom in. Quick note about the zooming. I will zoom when it's possible to do so. Sometimes it's not really possible to do it. Um, and sometimes a magnifier slows down or crashes IDA. So unfortunately, I won't be able to zoom in for any everything. But uh, right here, there's that global structure I'm referring to. And if we double click on it, you can see it takes us in this MR data section, which is this protected area where there's a couple function calls that allows you to uh, edit it or not, basically. And if you want to turn on the right permission temporarily to make changes to it, you can do that. Otherwise, it's relatively protected. In fact, if we look at IDA, just a disassembler view here, and if I say F5 to decompile it, it's probably not going to work. Let's see if it yells at us. Yeah, it didn't yell at us, but basically it's, it's nothing there. Because we need to go in and say view, open subviews, go to segments. And then we need to edit the MR data section and just turn on the right permission is all we got to do. So I'll add that. Oh, I just hit cancel by accident. Let's go back in here. Edit segment. Add the right permission. Oh, okay. Now jump back over to our pseudocode and I'll just F5 to refresh. It's, our, it's doing it already, it looks like. Yeah, perfect. Now it's able to decompile it and we can see everything. But back to that soon. Let's go back to our IDA view. That mitlib state is what I'm talking about. If Also, if we go down there and look at the cross-references to it, notice that there's only like 10 or so. There's not that many because the cross-references you see are only to the first offset within this big global structure known as mitlib state. And it's all undocumented. We don't know anything about what's stored there except for the things that we learned when we were reversing. So that's what I want to show you now. If we go back over to Windabug or Windbag, whatever you want to call it, we can look at that structure. Now that the process is running, we can say uh, DPS and then G underscore mit lib state. And this is starting from the top. We know that offset five zero is where it's looking because over here, if we scroll down a little bit, right there, um, you see five zero five eight seven zero offsets to that structure. We learned through debugging that offset 50 is where this nested structure exists and we're just going to call it module information. The reason we're going to call it that is if we go back over to Windabug and we say DPS, I'll just actually put up arrow, and then plus, let's say, 50L5. L5, because I wanted to list five quad words, because we we learned that the structure is only five quad words long. Uh, the members, there's only five. So we see at the top here, this is the base address of NTDLL easily verifiable. This is the size of that image. And then the next one down is a pointer to the name. And then the next one down is the pointer to the full path. And then at the very bottom is a U-long long Boolean that is basically checks whether or not the program counter at the time of the access to the guard page is, is the instruction pointer within the range of that module. And so again, it's just a Boolean. And you'll see a loop inside. Actually, I'll show you right now. There's a loop inside here 
that takes us right to this arrow there that takes us back up to the top because it's iterating over the array of structures and there are only three of them because we learned in that session that it's NTDLL, kernel base, and kernel 32 are the three modules protected by default. So that's why we have the little loop there. So going back over to Windebug, if we want to see the next one, we can say plus 7, 8, L5. And then we're going to get kernel base and it's five members. So let's do a quick validation that that is the size just to see how we go about doing that. 2A3000. So I'm going to say dot shell and then minus CI. We want to run the command bang DH on kernel base. And we're using shell so that we can use the find string command to filter the output. There's many ways we could check the size of this thing. I'm doing it this way though. Slash C colon, and we want to look at size of image. I forgot to put a quote on the front of that. And it should show us 2A3, which it does. So right there, that's how we can validate stuff like that. Same thing with the next one down. Um, we can go about looking at this pointer offset many different ways. I'll just say, how about DC? And then we'll do G mit lib state. Actually, I'll do a pointer to it. So POI and then plus. So 7, 8 hex is the offset to the beginning of the second, um, the second item in the array, which is kernel base. So we're going to say plus 7, how about 8, 8 hex. And perfect. So what I did is looked at the um, third member there, because the first member is the name, and there's a load address. Second member is the size. Third member is the uh, the name. So we've got kernel base right there, that DLL. If I go to the next one down, so if we go to 90, it's going to be the full path. And there you can see the full path. And then that final member is just that uh, U long long uh, Boolean. Great. So we've got all that information. I, I looked at that stuff real quick to show you because we're going to, when we're recreating the structure, the names that I'm going to use, that's where we're getting them from because we can call them whatever we want since we don't have the symbols and it's just how it works. So I'm going to go in up to view, sub views, and we're going to go to local types. So the, I'm going to hit insert to basically bring up a new one that I can define here. The, the problem with this, with the, the zooming is zooming again locks up Ida sometimes and slows down. The, it's just weird. I don't know what the issue is, but um, the it's not very clear either. This is on the highest setting in StreamYard when I'm recording this, but for whatever reason, the font is not very nice. So I'm going to just bring a notepad up real quick just so you can see it before I just copy and paste it in there. So at least it looks a little bit better. But um, the local types view, like it's going to allow us to basically set the high level C type, um, basically C local types used such as things for like structs and um, type desks and enums, whatever else. So let's just bring up Notepad, the best IDE on the planet. Bad joke, I know. All right, I don't know why it's going so slow, but this should be at least a bit bigger. In fact, let me set the font even larger so it's nice and clear. That should be plenty big. All right, so I'm going to say struct, and then we're going to call this thing image information. The reason we're calling that, again, is because we can name it whatever we want. And we know that that is the information about the images. There's three items in that array. Uh, and so we're going to call these things accordingly. So next up, just open it up here. And I'm going to call this first one pvoid, and that'll be to image base and we saw that was the first entry there and then we're going to say u long long this is going to be the image size next one is going to be a pu char and that's going to be the image name pu char and it's going to be the image uh, path and then finally is a u long long if you don't set it to U long long in a 64 bit, you're going to get a bunch of like dummy entry points, uh, not entry points, but things in the structure that's ugly. So this last one is uh, is program counter in module range, we'll call it. 
Great, and we'll close that out. Just so you can see it, okay, I'm gonna copy this now and then we'll paste it here and it should just take it. Bad declaration, let me see what's going on here. It probably doesn't like my, it probably doesn't like the, um, the fact that I did it in Notepad and pasted it over. Let me retype it up real quick. It'll probably work fine. Struct image information. I'll be real fast. Open it up. Image base. And then it's part of the indentation. Uh, U long, long image size. And then PU char image name, PU char image path, and then U long long is program counter in module range. And then we'll close this thing out and see if it takes it. Yeah, so of course it takes it there. Uh, again, copy paste, wonderful. So it's not yet in the database, so I double click it and we'll say, okay, yes, now it's in the database so we can we can use it now. If I go back over to Ida though, we're not quite done because if we look at this offset, for example, and we say T to set the uh, structure offset here, you can see at the bottom it says image information dot image base. So if we say, okay, if we apply it, well, what it does is it does this. Okay, took it this time. Uh, image information dot image base plus five zero hex. That's not what we want because the, the problem is there's a parent structure here or whatever you want to call it. And this is a nested structure, which is an array inside. So we need to at least define as much as we can about the parent. All we know about the parent structure, the global structure is that at offset five zero is this nested structure, which is our image information. So we're going to have to set up dummy information. So I'm going to say control Z to kill that for now. I'll go back over to... Um, this guy here, just so you can see what I'm typing, I'm gonna have to retype it in Ida, but I'm gonna say this is a struct. And we're gonna call this one mit lib state. And then open it up. Not much to create here. I wanna say char. This is gonna be just like a, a dummy. I'm gonna say derp. And we're going to go up to 0x50 because we know 50 is where that nested structure that we care about starts. And then after that, we're going to say struct. And we know what this is, underscore mit lib state. And then space, give it a name, g mit lib state. Because we're going to be applying the type def to mit lib state here in a moment. So we close that out. That's all we know about it right now. Great. So let me go recreate this inside Ida. And we'll say local types. I'll hit insert here. And we'll create that new one again. So struct. And I'll call it underscore mit lib state. Open it up. I'm going to say char derp. We'll get the size of 0x50. Close that out. And then we'll say struct. And then image information. Call it image info and then close this out. Okay. So now it creates a new one on the bottom. We got to add it to the database. So the size of the structure is seven, eight. Now there's definitely more beyond that. We just don't know what it is. So we'll be able to go back and make changes to the structure as we learn more about what's at these other offsets. Right now we're just focusing on that one nested spot that we know. So we go back over to Ida view. You would think we're done, but we have to apply the um, the type definition to gmitlib state. So we click on gmitlib state, and then we'll go ahead and say why. And now we got to set this. So I'm going to say um, struct and then mit, actually, yeah, mit lib state and we need to apply that to g mit lib state. We say okay, and it takes it. So look what it's done right off the bat. It now says mit lib state dot derp. 
plus zero C. So remember we set up the dummy kind of variables in there, members in there, because we don't know what's there yet, but that's a good sign. So now if we go down to seven zero here, for example, that's where that Boolean should be. So we hit T and up towards the top, it says mitlib state image info is PC and module range, which is correct. So we say, okay. And now it puts that out there and now it's, it's, it's good. Now we've got this global structure, mitlib state we know, then image info, which is our nested structure and the member offset where the program counter and module range. Five zero, if we do the same thing here, that's where the offset to the image base is. So we let it populate that one. Five eight, this is the offset to the image size. So we let that one populate. So looks great. Another thing that's cool is if we go down to MITLIB state now, and we look at the cross references, look how many there are. I don't expect you to read that, but there are way, way more because now every offset to that structure, at least to the offset seven, eight that we've created so far, these are references to those offsets. So as we debug and learn more about these offsets, we can go and again, change the structure to make it uh, look nicer. It's gonna really help us out with our reversing as we work with this DLL in general. So the next time I go to look at this DLL and we wanna work with another mitigation, obviously this stuff is going to be helpful because there's no way we can me memorize all this stuff uh, from reversing something six weeks ago, eight weeks ago. So I'll just hit cancel here. Now, the last thing we'll look at is if we go to the pseudocode, this should now be able to get updated. I'm going to hit F5, and it should update. And I know it's uh, small on the screen, but you can see things hopefully now like gmitlibstate.imageinfo.imageBase, gmitlibstate.imageinfo.imageSize. So it's populated up inside our pseudocode. There's still a lot more cleanup to do because again, there's probably lots of pointers being used, and there's other members that we haven't defined yet. So a lot more work, but that's how you kind of go down this path of cleaning things up and, and making it helpful by documenting or recreating these undocumented structures. So that's the gist of what I wanted to show. Hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully our next time I'll be able to figure out the uh, zooming thing, but I will catch you next time on an upcoming stream. Thanks.